So first, every project will start with uh, designing the CAD, I mean the blueprints in AutoCAD. So we can have a template to work with. I was a little bit clueless with the placement of the, the peacock's feathers on the crown, but lucky for me, there's this channel called Cosmo Paper Art, and he made the Mickey Model crown out of paper. He freely shares the sketch. It's basically a blueprint, so I just use that as reference. So I printed out the blueprints and I made a prototype of the crown like just very quickly in an hour. And I tried on the crown and I am happy with the scale of the crown. Boom, just like that. Once I'm happy with the blueprints, I print it out and it's time to cut out the aluminum sheets into the shape of the crown. And I just use a pair of scissors, it's the optimal tool for this job. I have used both the scissor and a knife for this process before, and I just found that a knife would cause a lot of jagged and sharp edge. And also a pair of scissors is just easier to maneuver. Guys, I'm apologizing, my voice is a little bit more timid and tired, like I'm not sad, I'm just kind of exhausted. I've been recording voiceover for three different videos now, and so I'm kind of running out of breath right now. <laughs> but yeah, there's no time to be wasted, I, I really want to get the video out as soon as possible. And once you cut out all of the peacock's feather, you can peel off the paper. And it's a little bit hard because the glue is kind of strong. So I spray some rubbing alcohol onto the paper, let it sit there for like a minute, and it should be easy to peel off. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And of course there are a lot of glue residue on the aluminum sheets, so just spray it down and rub it off. And right at this point after I finished the process, I took some photos and I posted them on my Instagram story and I asked you guys if you can guess what I'm making. You guys are pretty smart, so of course I wasn't surprised that a lot of you guys got it right. And now it's time to emboss the edge of the peacock feather. Like as you can see on the left, that is not embossed yet. And the feather on the right looks a lot more, you know, just more polished. There's a little bit of curve to it too. This step is quite easy. Just take a ballpoint pen, just trace along the outline of the feather. And of course you need to apply quite a bit of pressure too. It's a little bit hard to control, but I'm sure you will get a hang of it. You will get used to it, like once you develop the muscle memory for this process. Okay, so it's day two. Let's turn these wimpy, weak aluminum sheets into some structure frame that we can actually make a crown out of. At first, I did this process with A6000 glue, but then I just find that using a glue gun is much easier. And also, the hot glue cover up the, the wire nicely, so it's more, it's just more stable, it's more strong. So I take a section of the wire and I bend it into the shape of the loop. Mm -hmm. And then I put the hot glue straight on in section, of course, because the hot glue does dry a little bit fast. And then you want to immediately put on the wire and then press it down. I use a jar of moisturizer and I put on some wax paper on the lid so that it's non-stick. And now for the barbs of the feather, just use a wire, uncut, and put it on the hot glue. And once the glue has set, we can go ahead and, uh, and clip off the excess with a flush cutter. Just repeat the process for a bazillion more times. Once you're done, it's time to curl the frame. So the real Mikimoto crown, the frame is made from platinum, right? 
So I will use Miracrom finishing spray paint from Bosni. And this stuff is amazing. And nope, and of course I'm not sponsored by Bosni. It would be amazing if they did. So if you're from Bosni, call me. And then I let the entire thing dry for at least half a day. I spray painted them at night and I just let them sit around and hang out overnight. And then I went to bed and the next morning we have some beautiful finished peacock feathers. is so much different and much better than the silver spray paint that I used in the past for my ice crown and my raven claws item. You can see the difference right here as I'm comparing the two. Like every time I make a crown, there's always three stages. Like the first is excitement. The first few tasks are pretty simple and easy. The final stages, like the crown is almost finished. I just need to bedazzle them, like putting pearls and gems and rhinestones on. So that was fun, but the middle process is hell and we have reached that point of the project. Which is building the entire crown. So the design of the Mickey Motor crown is these seven peacock feathers that branches out from this stem and these stems they meet in one point at the center. So this process is going to be a little bit difficult. So obviously the copper wire is not strong enough to be made into the stem of the feather. So I'm actually using the wire headband. I got this from AliExpress and of course along with every supplies and pearls and diamonds that I use in this video, I will link all of the products in the description box below. So with the very helpful blueprints from uh, Cosmo Paper Art, I use it as a reference to measure out the, the length of the stems and of course the spot where the pearl will sit. And because the wires, the stems, they meet in one point, I can't just let them sitting on top of each other like that, like it was just falling apart. So with two pairs of pliers, I bent the wire into a bunch of random shape, you know? The idea here is to make sure that they are not sitting on top of each other, just like so. Then with a piece of tape, I tape them together to hold them in place. Then I take another piece of aluminum sheet, put on a lot of E6000 glue on top, and I glue the entire assembly on top of the aluminum sheet. While waiting for the centerpiece to cure, because E6000 glue does take a while, probably a few hours, to completely set. So meanwhile, we can work on the crown band. So for the back of the crown, I have this adjustable crown band, so it can fit any head sizes. It was a long and boring process to make this part, so I have made a separate, dedicated video on three different ways you can make adjustable crown bands so yeah make sure you check it out it's in the description box previously on Grey's anatomy i left a bit of wire hanging off of the crown band and now it comes to good use because we're gonna use that to have some kind of anchor to glue the front of the crown to the crown band so i bend it like so So it's the next day, the glue has cured completely, so it's strong, it sturdies nicely. Now I want to further reinforce the length of the crown band and the front of the crown. So I use this 5mm flat aluminum wire. The radiating piece have finally got plenty of time to set. So we can go ahead and trim off the aluminum sheet so it can fit snugly behind the front of the crown band. And I'll just hold the entire thing with a flat nose pliers. And just with my hand, I bend the wire because the crown has these curvatures, right? The feather would go from one center, it radiates and it curves back. 
after my struggle from yesterday, this just makes me so happy. It's so solid, symmetrical. This is literally the skeleton of the entire crown. If you, if this is not perfect, the entire crown is off. It's not gonna be good. And while we're waiting for that to set, we can work on assembling the feathers to the skeleton. So just put them together and you're done. No, no, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as it looks. It's not as easy as it looks. What we're going to do with that is we're going to put about half an inch of it in the base of the pie. <laughs> This is going to be a game pie with many layers. I'll be brushing each layer with egg yolk and seasoning with salt, pepper and nutmeg. In fact, I had to make many adjustments to the wireframe and the feather curvature in order to fit all of them on the crown and in the best design. At some point I thought, oh my god, did I have the wrong measurements? Because all seven of these feathers is not gonna fit on the crown. But like, it, it is, it's definitely gonna fit, don't worry. Just making sure that you're fidgeting around and, you know, finding the best placement for the feathers. Well, woo, that was a lot of work. Woo, the most difficult part of this project is finished, guys. And I'm, I'm surprised at how good it looks. I'm very happy with the work. So before we can call it a day, we will have to strengthen the weakest links. The weakest links! And by weakest links, I mean the spot where the two feathers meet. So just a lot of hot gluing, and I use the same copper wire just to secure them, just to lock the feathers in place. You know, it's like a group of friends holding hands together. If each person is holding the next person's hand, this is a bad analogy. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, but you know what I mean. I'm sure. And to finish it off, we're gonna spray paint it a second time. Okay, so let's recap. We have cut out the frame and reinforced them with wire and hot glue. Curled them, spray painted them. Then we make the skeleton. Putting the skeleton on the crown band. <sighs> and all of that took four days. It's time for my favorite part of every crown project. We finally get to encrust the whole thing in diamonds and pearls. I got these pearls on AliExpress ranging from 18 millimeters down to 4 millimeters. Let's see if I can finish the crown in one day. Oh, I just love these. These are fake pearls, but God, I love pearls. I love pearls. I would, I would make a lot of more pearls. If you guys have any suggestion on like really beautiful pearls, tiaras, and crowns, leave the comments down below and I might make it in the future. And yes, I will make a detailed spreadsheet breaking down the sizes of the pearls and then the quantity of them that I used for the Mickey Moto crown. So it's at the end of this video. So keep watching. And of course the wire is not perfect so we will have to re-bend them in order to make the pearl completely centered. The pearl is definitely the jewels of this crown so you don't want them to be sitting too far back. So yeah, just bend them, bring them forward. Oh, it started to come together. For the front band of the crown, there's this beautiful diamond encrusted the entire length at the bottom. So we're gonna do that. You're probably wondering, what am I doing with that syringe right there? Well, I filled it up with E6000 glue, you know, just because the tube of the E6000 glue is total crap. There is no precision work that you can get out of that tube. So earlier I have posted a tutorial video on my channel on the tip to use the syringes with the E6000 so you can get the best precision work with applying the glue. So yeah, check out the video. I will link the video in the description box below. 
In the past, I would just use individual loose rhinestones and I would stick them on hand by hand. I mean one by one and that is very time consuming and doesn't look really good so i just discovered this last year like this very convenient diamond chains like rhinestone on a chain and it just makes making crowns so much faster and enjoyable So I don't want the pearl to just like pop off of the crown like one by one after a few wears so I will string them onto a piece of wire like this is 0.3 millimeter, just a thin piece of wire so that even if the pearl pop off from the surface it would not go anywhere it would stay in line stay in line pearl wake up pearl and try that on and if it fits you glue it down And I did take my time to press down the pearls, massage it in, making sure that every pearl sits nicely on top of the glue. And it's time to put the pearls on the loop of the feather. So the Mickey Moto crown, I'm sure is the most well-known and popular crown in history of pageant worldwide. Now just telling from the fact that a lot of you guys suggesting me to make this crown for years is enough to know how popular this is. It's just so iconic and elegant. But you know, there might be some of you guys who has no clue what the Mickey Moto crown is. Well, it belongs to Miss Universe organization and they use it to crown the winner of Miss Universe. The first title holder that got the chance to wear this Mickey Moto crown was Denise Quinones, Miss Universe 2001 from Puerto Rico. And the last woman to wear this crown is Catriona Gray from the Philippines in 2018. This crown is so delicate, they literally have an insurance for it just in case got damaged and yes, someone did break them. The company that designed and made this crown is the Mikimoto Pearl Company from Japan. Funnily, the only Japanese to be worn this crown is Miss Universe 2007, Ryo Mori. And that's only the second time Japan ever won the title. Just look at that, you can see how much different the diamonds make. It just look much more orgasm worthy. I prepare by cutting a bunch of section of the right swords on the chain. And then after 5 hours of bedazzling the crown, ladies and gentlemen, the Mickey Moto crown. So here is the spreadsheet of every supplies that I used and the cost breakdown. This is the first part of my Boy to Miss Universe transformation series. So stay tuned for next week where I will show you guys how I make the gown that I wear with the Mickey Moto crown in this video. And guys, I can't stress enough on how important it is to ring that bell. Click the notification bell button right next to the subscribe button so you won't miss a single video from my channel. Especially if you can already tell, I only post like once in a while. And, and, and don't don't leave just yet. I would like to shout out to Crystal and Christine for your $15 tips over buymeacoffee.com. Thank you so much. You too. I love you. Thank you guys. I appreciate every single one of your support. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.